All right, MMA fans, Chris Wade is back. Chris, welcome back on Short Dog. How are you today? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I'm fine as well. Thanks for asking. You look in good spirits. Are you already preparing for your upcoming clash with uh, Rio Jikudo? I am, and I have been. Uh, we've been we've been preparing pretty hard since since well before we ne even knew what the matchup was. Um, I had a feeling that I might be fighting him, uh, just based on the way things were playing out. So, uh, yeah, we've been getting ready for well over a month now. It sounds good. And uh, as usual, uh, I looked through your Instagram stories. You look pretty motivated for your upcoming fight. Is that so? I'm sorry, what's that? I look you pretty, look you pretty motivated. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, listen, if you can't get motivated right now um, in this kind of a moment, then you don't really belong um, in there, in the cage. Mm -hmm. So um, I've uh, I've hit the reset button literally in in multiple facets of my life, um, and we're just we're just all about getting ready for what's going to be a banger here. It's the first time uh, you lose back to back fights in a while. Actually, it's the first time since your UFC days. You know when you fought. Uh, um, Mahashev, uh, you know, and uh, immediately after uh, fighting the uh, Kabilov, yeah, Kabilov, yes, yes, it's been, it's been a while. So, how much does it motivate you, you know, to be on, on unfortunately, on the wrong side of results this time? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm furious, I'm, I'm, I'm furious with myself first and foremost. Um, I mean, listen, I, I proved in the past that that's more than a winnable fight for me. I dominated that guy like 18 months ago. So it just goes to show you in in MMA that on any given night, you know, things can change depending on a lot of different variables. So uh, usually one of the things that's my strong suit, right, is my consistency, like you said. I don't go on long losing streaks or anything like that. So um, I just, uh, I know that I was not myself um, fighting him uh, on the 1st of April. I was, uh, I wasn't in a good place. And I, I, uh, but you know, in the PFL season, you don't get the luxury to, you don't get to say like, hey, um, you know, I'm gonna pull out of this fight, and I'm gonna get my th my stuff situated, and and I'm gonna come back in a couple of months. You once the season starts, you just gotta go. So, um, it's just time to <clears throat> to uh to push through certain things and to uh get my head on straight. You're coming off that loss to Baba Jenkins on april 1st was it a better better version of jenkins you faced or was it that jenkins faced a worse version of yourself or i don't know a sort of bad day version of yourself um i mean if, I, if i'm gonna be honest i think that it's probably a little bit of a combination of the two um mm -hmm. But, I mean, we should both be embarrassed by that fight, in my opinion. Like, for he fought me at literally my worst. Like, I felt like I had nothing to give. I felt like I, there was, I couldn't move. I couldn't do anything. But, you know, literally, he, he dry humped me the, the entire fight after talking for weeks on weeks on how he was going to knock me out beat me up, uh, punch and kick me in the face for 15 minutes. And then what does he do? He gets scared, gets nervous, gets in there, throws one strike, and then just hangs on to my legs for 13 minutes. Um, <clears throat> that's not what fight fans want to see. Nobody likes to watch that guy fight. Every time he fights like that and he, and he wins a fight, 
that's how it goes. So, um, but with that being said, like I let him do those things, you know, I, last fight he tried to do that, that shit. And I got out, I got on top this fight. He made a couple of adjustments to retain control and I, I couldn't make him pay for, for stalling. I just, uh, frustrating fight, you know? What was going on with you? You told me that you weren't the best version of yourself and we saw that in the cage. Was there anything going on behind the scenes? Yeah, you know, honestly, one, you know, maybe one day, like as we move a little further down, I'll I'll open up to you a little bit more about that. But just trust me, fight fans and stuff when I tell you that, you know, there's nothing that can... Um, get a fighter off his game like certain things in their personal life and um i just uh wasn't in a good headspace and i i will open up a little bit more about that but for now i just want to leave it as just um a lot of uh there's a lot of nonsense in my life that's not not there anymore so so are you in a better place right now, uh, mentally or in your personal life in general? Yeah, absolutely. Like, I know it hasn't been that long, uh, right? But um, I'm already just in a better headspace. Um, that that fight week was a tough fight, a chaotic fight week for me mentally. And um, I tried you know, I tried my best to be prepared to put certain things out of my head, but everybody's a human being and, uh, you can only, you can only compartmentalize so much. Um, uh, I've been pretty good at it most of my, but I mean, I could take you back in my career. I can point to like three or four points where I was in a similar position and none of the bouts ever went well. So, uh, you know, really important for a guy like me to be in a good headspace, and I am right now. From your words, it sounds that the rivalry with Jenkins is not over yet. Is it still personal for you? Uh, well, you know, it wasn't. And then, like, I was, uh, just because of the situation of the fight, I was, uh, I was gracious, you know, and humble when he won. But nobody made me aware of some of the antics he was doing in the cage uh because my head was down like while we were uh grappling and um you know for him to uh in like the second round to be like uh air humping me like he's uh israel adesanya who just dropped paula costa um when he's not he's literally stalling dry dry humping right we use that term as fight fans when we're upset with how a guy's competing that they're they're just wrestling the hell out of a guy or they're dry humping them um so when i when i wasn't told about that after the fight by my by basically like my family um that's when i said like nah this guy's a piece of shit um so it ain't over it was, but then when I found out um, about that, I mean, to be honest with you, I thought about just like, at a principle, like, what if I just walk up on him, Nate Diaz style, and lace him in the hallway the next time we show up in Georgia? Ooh. But, you know, the, I understand that that pretty much ends my ride here. So, takes money out of my family's pocket. So, it's not really the smart play. Maybe if I had, uh, I was in a better spot, he would get his right, he would get some street justice right away. But, um, yeah, man, there's certain shit you just don't do, uh, to, to somebody else in there. And, uh, I feel like he definitely crossed that line. So, he could get it for sure. If I may, please don't do it outside the cage. I'm sure you will have plenty of chances to meet again inside the cage. And 
actually i was about to ask you do you think that you and him will cross paths again in the cage sooner or later yeah i absolutely do i think that i think karma's a bitch and i think that um he saw the worst of me and now he has a false confidence i think i'm going to go in there and get a finish i'm going to make the playoffs and he's going to get stuck with me right away in the semifinals. That's just the way I feel it's going to play out. I can I can feel it. So, Chris, it sounds like you're pretty motivated. It sounds like you have this strong desire to win your next assignment. What should fans expect from you going inside the cage on June 8th? On June 8th, I promise you, listen, somebody's going down, right? Um, I have zero points. He has zero points. We both need to make the playoffs. We've both done it before. We've both had zero before going in and, and made it happen with first round finishes. We know what's on the line. You're going to see fireworks. Um, this guy knows how to come forward. He knows how to be aggressive and throw. Um, I know how to be aggressive, especially when my head is on right. And, um, you know, a couple of these dudes, they made the mistake of just giving me motivation when I really didn't have too much of an angle to be motivated about. Now I'm just sitting here like Clubber Lang doing push-ups at night, thinking about them, writing their names on shit. And... Uh, yeah, it's going to be a good story that we're going to go through here, me and you. Watch out for the Long Island Killer, ladies and gentlemen. Chris, thank you very much for giving us you know, your time today. Best of luck with your next assignment. Hopefully, I'll hear again from you this year. The Long Island Killer is back, Tudor. I'm back. They I'm did pretty... this. They brought, they brought him back. I'm pretty sure it is. Thank you again, Chris. Good luck. All right, man. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye.